Hey, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, Jasmine. Good evening, Good evening, Professor. Good Good evening. evening, professor. Good evening. <laughs> Only two people. I mean, you know, it's just 601, so we'll just give it a few minutes for the rest of the class. Um, I don't know, because it's the last day, I, and I don't know how many people would be uh, joining. And since we are going to uh, do, uh, actually do it on Excel, do, uh, in other words, you know, uh, uh, run the regression to uh, find beta and, you know, uh, uh, actually, you know, uh, uh, run cap m right so um uh, looks like yeah <laughs> uh one more person right coral hello coral how are you well uh yeah i hope you are having a great evening um all right so uh I guess the rest of the class will uh, uh, join as we go on. So today, um, uh, actually, I, I did. Okay. Oh, I'm not sharing anything yet. So let me share. Share my screen. All right. So. No, actually, I actually went ahead and, you know, uh, okay, uh, did this yesterday. Uh, so we're going to do this now. So what we what we are gonna do today is first you know, we're, we're gonna have to uh, uh, go and get S and P five hundred data, right, and uh, uh, extract the data that we only need, and then we plot it. Uh, we uh, will you know uh, put you know uh, apples data returns data and S and P five hundred returns data side by side and run regression and which will give us the uh, beta and alpha right and we can plot that we can you know uh, plot those you know uh, scatter right scatter plot right and then uh, find a trend line uh, and also, uh, equation of the trend line is, you know, uh, the parameters of equations of the uh, trend line is already, and actually, you know, you will see exactly the same thing here, and uh, same R square here, and so on. Okay, and then, you know, uh, to... Um, find required return using CAPM, right? This is CAPM, right? Uh, we need T-bill data. We're gonna go get the T-bill data. Uh, so, uh, a lot of things to do. Uh, so we got we got really, you know, uh, exciting, uh, exciting exercise, right? And I don't know how many of you have. Uh, oh, I, you know, uh, as of my last check, I saw there were like, you know, uh, uh, at least like six people who have already submitted files. But you know, uh, uh, don't forget if you haven't done it yet. Uh, it's due 11.59 tonight, and there can be no extension or no uh, uh, late submission 
or final because everything has to be, you know, all the data must be compiled all together and processed together to uh, calculate your grade. Um, and I have, you know, I, it's very urgent. All right, so um, let's go ahead and, you know, uh, so you, uh, please open, please open uh, this file that you worked on last time, right? We did, you know, remember the apple, right? We're going to keep adding to, um, uh, we're going to keep adding to uh, the data to this file. So please open it. Right, please open it. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to um, uh, we're going to go to S and P five hundred. Right, we're going to and I already if you go to Yahoo Finance, right and uh, type here S&P 500, right? And inter interestingly, the ticker symbol for S&P 500 is uh, carrot. This sign is called carrot. The symbol uh, GSPC, right? SP and S&P, standard and poor's. And you will, the basic, uh, okay, so just to, uh, Okay, um, I have S&P 500. Okay, so did everyone get to S&P 500? Please confirm. We can say yes or I. All right, uh, Zainab, only one person. Okay, Malaysia, all right, two, only two? How about the rest of the class? Uh, so if you're there, you know where to go, right? All right, Jasmine. Um, historical, click on historical data. And when you are there, we'll need to change it to monthly because it has to, uh, it has to uh, comply with, it has to concur it has to concur with the Apple's data we got. And uh, we had, we downloaded uh, monthly, right? Monthly price. So we're gonna uh, click on monthly. And then we go back five years. So uh, we'll go back to July, 2018. And starting from January, uh, I mean uh, July first. Okay. Now once again, uh, it will be all you know end of the month data. You click on done. Okay. Now we uh, apply. Now everything is you know um, monthly, right? Now the problem is now we need to download, but it doesn't have any download button. It doesn't have download button. So what do we do then? Uh, it doesn't show any download button. So what we do is we're gonna just highlight, make sure only the data are highlighted, not the uh, side panel, not the, uh, uh, the ads in the side panel. If it is all highlighted like this, you can right click the mouse, your right click your mouse uh, button and click copy. Copy. Right? And in the, uh, you can, you can open, right? Using this tab, right? So, yeah. Using uh, this, you can open another. Right? 
And I'm not, uh, I'm gonna open a completely new, I'm gonna open a completely new file because now new worksheet, blank worksheet, because it's all, you know, uh, currently uh, too many, you know, I've uh, too many worksheets are open. So, uh, select, if you select this first cell, A1, right? Yeah. And uh, click home and paste. Now, all of those, you know, uh, data will be pasted there. And as I said, now, uh, working with very small font is not very good for your vision, right? And uh, normally I would change the font. So click here, right? Click this corner. The entire worksheet will be highlighted. Select home and select your favorite font, right? For me, you know, uh, Bakersville is, it's not necessarily my favorite, but uh, it's, I don't have to scroll down a lot. It's right there, so I don't have to scroll down all the way to the bottom. And then for font size, I will increase it to a size 14. Okay. Now, uh, so I have downloaded SMP 500. The SMP 500 an index, F SMP 500 is an index. Uh, so it's not actual price, but it works just like the price, right? Uh, when, you know, S&P 500, uh, obviously uh, 4,450, 4,588 is, you know, uh, a higher price than 4,450, right? Now, I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to use it as is. I'm going to extract only the ones that I uh, need. So double uh, right click on the uh, bottom tab. If you right click on the bottom tab, you can rename it. So just for later, right? Uh, just as a, uh, for your own reference, you will name it SNP. Usually, S and P five hundred. I would call it, you know, raw, raw data, raw. Okay, S and P five hundred raw. And then, I'm gonna highlight everything. Right, click here, highlight everything, and copy, and open the next worksheet. Open another one, and then. paste, right? However, this time, I don't need high-low, open high-low, right? Just like what we did with Apple, delete those. I will leave everything else. I, I will uh, clean out everything else. I will delete everything else except the close price, okay? Okay, and uh, and this I will call it TM uh, market price, right? Market price. Now let's find and uh, RM. Market return, right? RM stands for market return, of course. And I'm going to unders underline it, center. Uh, let me, normally I use, you know, a lowercase, but let's, you know, uh, uppercase. Okay. Now, we, uh, and everything is already, uh, sorted in descending order, right? Sorted in descending order. So now all you need to do is, okay, to find return. Uh, 
minus this over this. There you go. Now I want to turn it into percentage. So give it percentage and give it at least two decimal places or three decimal places. Let me give it three decimal places. Okay. And now all you need to do is just copy and drag, right? Drag, copy and drag all the way back. Okay. But you can't go any further than, you know, uh, because you can't do it here because there's no price data anymore, right? Any questions so far? Any questions? Any questions? No. No? Okay. Okay. All right. Now we're going to then. We will need to uh, put it side by side with um, Apple's return, right? So um, so this is you know, what I got, right? So this, this number is slightly different because I did it yesterday. This is yesterday's number based on yesterday's S&P 500. So obviously it would be a slightly different. And then, so from the Apple's data that you uh, worked on last time, right? I'm going to copy Apple's price uh, and returns data. And then open, you open another worksheet. And here, you paste. Okay. Now, so here I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, name label this worksheet as in P five hundred return. Okay. Now this is then I will, um, and here, one more thing. I'm gonna copy this, right? We'll select this column, copy and paste, but this time value only, value only, right? That's value only. Now let's see. Okay. So it's value only. So I can delete this column, right? Because if it is not value, obviously, you know, um, when I delete it, then it's going to change because it's pointing to a column. It used to be pointing to column B. Now, so we know this is Apple. Now we're going to highlight this. Uh, I'm going to highlight uh, these three columns all together first. Copy. And bring it here, paste, and make sure, make sure your, um, make sure your, yeah, dates are all, dates are all matching. Something's not right. The, uh, why is this all, oh, 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 date. Uh, why is the date all okay? So I guess I can so 
something went wrong when I, okay. But you know, we know uh, dates are matching, but you know, uh, uh, and this one, uh, I'm gonna have to delete this, but you know, before I delete that, I will need to make sure that this will be just the values because if I delete this and while column E contains formula, if I delete this, this will be all messed up. So, uh, oops, so I'm gonna do one more copy and go to paste then value only, right? Paste value only. There you go. So everything is just the value, right? Now I can delete this and delete again or delete column C or just move that to column D to column C. And you might see something like this. That just means the column is not wide enough to show all the number there. So all you need to do is uh, bring your cursor here, bring it right on the uh, border between the column label C and column label D and double click. And it's gonna automatically adjust the column width. Excuse me. Now, so I have, I need, uh, I need only 60 data points. Having additional one more data point, it doesn't hurt, but it's gonna get, get in the way later on. So, uh, and we are missing nothing by getting rid of this. So I'll get rid of that. I'll get rid of that too. So we have total of 60 data points, right? Each column, right? 60, 60 rows by one column, right? 60. Now, why did I do this? Because I'm now going to run a regression of Apple's return or market return. But to run a regression, you need to activate or um, invoke a feature that is uh, normally, normally, routinely dormant in Excel. Because you're gonna, we're gonna need to use, you know, data functions and we need something called data analysis. Data analysis, but you won't see that. Does anyone see this in the uh, data ribbon? This is called ribbon. Does anyone see this in your in the data ribbon? Anyone? Now you need to tell me. Do you have this in your data ribbon? No? I don't think you confirm. Oh, you have it? Malaysia, you have this data analysis. Uh, I don't know what uh, the block, data analysis block in the. Uh, huh? Okay, Jasmine, you do not. Okay. I mean, uh, Malaysia, if you have it, wonderful. That's great. So you, you, you have used it before, that means. And Jasmine, that would be very normal. Anybody, a Coral, do you, do you have this block or this patch? Hmm? Oh, yeah, no. Uh, Zaina, so I don't have to ask anymore. Brandon, do you have this patch? 
Most likely no. So uh, how do you then, how do you invoke or how do you activate it? Okay, so look, uh, watch carefully. Go to files, files, and then go down to, uh, uh, usually I would say option here, more. And we'll click on more. You see options. Click on options. And then it's going to, uh, you see general formula data, blah, blah, blah. Now you, at the, towards the bottom, you will see add ins. Add ins. And click on add ins. And then, now, uh, yeah, you will see add ins. So, um, In the add-ins, you will need to uh, uh, select analysis tool pack, VBA, right? You need to select this. Uh, solve our add-in. Uh, you know, uh, we'll do it later, but uh, at least this. Usually it comes in a pack. You, you can select all together. I normally, you know, uh, but you know, if you cannot select them simultaneously, that's fine. Just, you know, or Excel add-ins. Uh, select analysis tool pack. And later, uh, if, if you can, if it, if you can add in only one after another, one by one, later, you know, also add in solve. Right, but at least you should have analysis toolpath, and hit OK. Hit OK, right, and then uh, it's going to automatically activate it. So after that, if you click on data, you will see this patch there. Now, do you do, do you see it there, everyone? Do you see it? Okay, great. And how about the rest of the class? Okay, Jasmine, good. How about you, Coral? Do you do you have it there? Great. Zainab, you have it there now? Do you have it there now? Zainab? Brandon, do you have it there now? Brandon? Okay, Zainab. Alejandra? You have it there now. I'll have I'll have to assume you are there and you have it. Otherwise, okay, very good. Now we can run regression. First, uh, we can run regression as is, but you know, in my uh, original work, uh, I changed the name. Uh, I changed the label to X, uh, Y, and X. But that's fine. I mean, uh, you can you can rename it to Y. And, but you know, the idea is Apple's return is Y, Y variable, right? And market return is X variable. Okay, you just need to keep that in mind. And then. Now we're going to uh, click on data and click on data analysis. Okay. Now then this bo uh, dialog box opens. Now you scroll down until you find regression. You see regression there. Okay. Select it. Click OK. Then it's asking input Y range. This is Y. So you're gonna click that, select. You can select the label, that's okay. I mean, we can, we just tell it that there is label. And so it will be 61 rows by one column. And then input X range. This is X, 
include the label. There you go. And you just tell it, you just tell it, labels are there, labels. Now we're gonna select the output range, output range. So output range, I will usually, I normally use, uh, the, you know, uh, next, not, not the right next column, but you know, uh, leave one gap, leave a space, one column space and, uh, so I'm gonna put it in E1, so select E1. And then that's it, uh, nothing further. And then hit okay. Now instantaneously, you have the regression result, summary output. So uh, currently this whole area uh, is highlighted. So I'm gonna, while it is highlighted, I'm gonna give it borderline, thick borderline and change the font. Increase the font like this. Okay. So um, literally this is summary output. And what is this telling you? Um, let me increase uh, a couple of things. Uh, uh, look, um, if you want to see the label completely, uh, you're going to double click on this. But however, because this uh, title is put into a single one single cell, it might it's going to stretch this column E too much. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight these two cells. And uh, what I'm going to do is merge. I'm going to merge those two cells. So E1 and F1 are merged as one cell. Now, if you double click on it. Now, uh, this uh, column E is much, you know, uh, more uh, much better. Why is R square is very low. That that's something's not right. R square is very low. Something's not right. Something's not right. I, uh, oh, oh, uh, let me make sure if I have correct data. I will label this, uh, rename this. Apple versus Apple. Now the thing is, I don't I don't trust this result because something is wrong. Uh, because my original result, yeah, R square is 0 0.58, and coefficients are correct. Uh, coefficients are like intercept alpha is uh, x. Uh, in other words coefficient of x, in other words, beta is 1.28. T statistics are very meaningful, very significant. However, this one is totally wrong. So maybe I, I'll need to uh, run this again. Okay, let me run this again. Let me just uh, compare first. Let me compare my uh, original data with just for comparison. 
So something is not. Yeah, this one is not right. Why? Oh, uh, okay. So I must have. I see what I. I copied. No wonder why the dates were wrong. It looks like I copied instead of. Instead of copying this, instead of copying this, I copied this. No wonder. So, all I need to do is then, I'm going to, copy this. Yeah, I remember when I uh, deleted, you know, um, the uh, when I copied, you know, um, market return with the date, the original date that I copied from Apple's data was all wrong. So that was why. Okay, so now. Uh, So now uh, let's run the regression again. Let's run the regression again, okay? So we're gonna go back to our data analysis. My computer is slowing down. Uh, so I'm, uh, okay, now, regression, hit okay. All you need to do is change the Y, right? Input Y range. There you go. So leave uh, and leave everything. Leave everything alone. It's only you know you hit OK. It will say it just says this because there is something already in the area, right? Where it's going to be. Uh, copied into, uh, where it's going to be uh, printed. We hit OK. Now, the numbers look much better now. Again, I'm going to put a thick border line around it. And then increase the font and change the font style to something that I like. OK. Now it looks much better. Okay, so R square, uh, I'm going to first, I'm going to explain to you. Now, what is this? This is the uh, coefficients, coefficient of market return. In other words, coefficient of, coefficient of uh, X value, X variables. So this is beta value. And this is intercept, so that's alpha. So these two coefficients, right? I'm going to highlight them because uh, this gives you uh, the characteristics of the trend line. Okay. In other words, this tells you. This is what tells you, right? Um, Apple's return is alpha intercept, right? Plus beta times market return. And this is alpha, this is beta, okay? Now, next question is, you need to check their T statistics, T 
T statistics means uh, it's basically a measure that tells how robust how robust this, these esti this estimate is, right? Because uh, uh, statistically, it is basically saying that. Uh, null hypothesis can be rejected very strongly. In other words, um, this estimate could be just a fluke, right? It could be a fluke. Um, it could be just, you know, uh, by pure chance that this happened. However, so in uh, the true estimate could be no different from zero. That's the null hypothesis. But whether you reject null hypoth hypothesis or accept null hypo hypothesis depends on the T value. If T value is greater than two or close to two or greater than two, then you reject the null hypothesis. Because null hypothesis, you know, uh, 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 that means, you know, uh, this type of estimate has a very, very low probability of happening, right? That's what the T value is telling you, right? And uh, think about it. This is like, you know, uh, uh, minus 12 means, you know, you have 0 0.00, 12 zeros, right? And 13027. It has such a low probability. It has such a low probability, right? That the null hypothesis is true. That, you know, uh, uh, null hypothesis is what? This estimate is zero. It has this low probability that uh, the, true, uh, the true estimate is zero. So it has very low probability uh, of this happening. So T value is very high. If it is two, that means this is something that can happen only around the two standard deviation around the mean. That's what it means. Now, this alpha value, it is not two, but it's it's not it's not insignificant. It is you know uh, like one point almost one point six. It's kind of, it's close to two. I mean it's kind of significant. So uh, this is a, a very uh, uh, this is a robust. This is a robust estimate. It's a good estimate. What is R square? R square means, you know, um, goodness of fit. It means uh, with this Apple's return and market return, we did, we plotted those coordinates and the trend line between Apple's return and market return, we identify this correlation and intercept. So R square, uh, that means you know, not all the scatter plots can fall neatly on this on this line, however, uh, about 60%, 58% falls on this line. In other words, you, you can predict, you can predict Apple's return when this, uh, when we know this beta, alpha, and when uh, market return is given, Right? 
almost 60% is explained. That's what it means. So uh, let me show you what it means, actually. Let me show you what it means. So uh, let's, so uh, but first, everyone got the same result? Everyone got the same result? Please confirm. Fired. <laughs> okay, Jasmine, good, very good. You got the same result. What about other people? Coral, you got the same result? Zainab, good. Okay, Malaysia. Very good, very good. So, um, Alejandra, Brandon, did you guys get the same result? If you didn't, uh, and if you have any questions, please ask now. All right. Now, so we're going to move on. So let's, let's graph it. Let's graph it, right? So here, I'm going to uh, highlight these two columns, B and C, right? Okay. And then, so highlight, and then insert, go to insert, and then ch uh, charts. And we're going to select uh, scatter plot. So uh, chart, it's, this is scatter, right? Just scatter, right? Okay. Now, we're going to have to move it. You're going to have to drag it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to have to move it. Down, somewhere down. Yeah. And you can make it, you can make it bigger. You should make it bigger, actually. I'm going to, uh, by dragging the corner, right? I guess this is this is good. Okay. Now, and the thing is, the problem is now uh, it's switched. Actually, the way it is uh, understanding it is um, this is. Y and this is X, right? However, this is Y, Apple's return is Y. Uh, and uh, uh, market return is X. So we're going to switch that. So how do we do that? Just right-click on one of these plots. Right-click on one of those dots. And then click Select Data. Select Data. OK. Now, we can switch row column. Yes, switch row column. No. No, don't do that. Uh, First, chart, this is, you know, uh, um, okay. Uh, edit. Uh, series name. It's not uh, what we want the series name to be is Apple. So the, the wrong cell was selected. So you're going to select B1, right? X, currently, this is selected as X. So you only need to select this X, right? Just highlight column C. That's X. Series Y values. This is why. So you're gonna highlight that, right? And hit OK. Hit OK. Now everything has now changed, right? 
chart, chart title is now RT, which is Apple. Now you can, uh, now first of all, I normally do first, I'm going to uh, select the, uh, uh, the label, axis label first, you know, Y axis label, and then uh, font. I'm going to change the font to uh, 12. Ah, yeah, yeah. Something that would look, I mean, we have, you know, a, a large space and change the uh, font to Bakersville because as I said, you know, it's always uh, Baskerville, okay. Uh, that's my favorite font. What happened? Did it change? Yeah, now it changed. Horizontal axis two. I'm gonna change the font. Uh, Bakersville or Baskerville. Twelve. Hit OK. Yeah. Okay. You might wonder, is that an is that very important? No, it's not that important. But you know, uh, what looks more aesthetically, what looks more aesthetically uh, appealing, is easier to read. And also, uh, horizontal axis. I'm gonna go to. Uh, like format axis, I guess, format axis. Uh, maybe it's this one, I believe it's this one, uh, alignment. It's vertical alignment, middle center, to, uh, okay. Custom angle, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it angle, so it will be easier to read. I'm gonna make, uh, give it like minus 45 degrees, so it will be like, diagonal, which would be easier to read. And then, uh, okay, and this, even this, I'll change the font. Also, Bakersville, I'm going to make it 18, size 18, hit OK. All right, and even make it uh, bold. So it's very clear that this is the uh, plot of Apple's return, return at time t, right? Now, next, you see there's a trend, clearly, right? It's a positive trend, right? Upsloping, upsloping. Nobody would see a negative trend here, right? It's a positive trend. So we want to uh, we want to uh, draw this regression line or trend line, trend line. So select one of those dots. Right click. And then add trend line. Okay, linear. Okay, linear trend line. And uh, you want to display equation on chart, display R square on the chart. So we will confirm, right? And then Let's change, uh, was it still this? Maybe this, yeah. Now, trend line is currently uh, very flimsy, very puny and flimsy. So we're gonna accentuate it. I'm gonna give it red color and give it 
like four point. Okay, six point is good. It looks good. Six point. Um, with and dash uh, solid solid line no 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 solid line solid solid why is it not so dash type okay. yeah oh that looks too thick maybe five is fine or four point seven five and then uh, let's give it arrow arrowhead but you know we don't need uh, this is the beginning this is the uh, end we'll just give end the arrow so stealth arrow this looks good so i'll give it why is it and arrow top hmm I don't know why it's not. Uh, okay, something is not perfect. I can maybe. All right, if it is not, uh, it might, uh, usually it's working, but uh, uh, I can take care of it later. Cat type. Cat. Okay, never mind. It doesn't. And this one now. This is um, we need to take care of. This is the this is the equation of the uh, trend line and R square. And I also want to uh, change the font to uh, uh, Bakersville. and make it eighteen. Size 18. Okay. Oh, now I got this here. Now it is not showing. So look at this. This is what? This this is exactly what we got here. Look at the uh, beta value, 1.2848. 1.2879, if it is rounded, 48. Alpha. This intercept, right? Vertical intercept. That's zero point zero zero one two. Right? And zero point zero zero one two four eight, right? That's exact. And R square, 0.583, or R square, 0.5829. So our regression result, of course, this you know, trend line will obviously automatically calculate the same thing. And this R square means, think about it, not all of these not all of these dots can be explained by this, right? But what it means is, you know, R square is called goodness of fit, right? The fit, so that means, you know, uh, there's about 58% fit, right? This line, 
That means you know, if there are 100 data points, 100 dots, about 58, 58 falls on this line. This line can explain 58% of all these. Uh, so this can this this cannot be explained. I mean, this cannot be uh, predicted. These dots cannot be, but you know, these dots can be predicted. These dots can be predicted when think about it. When X is uh, always some you know uh, spam holes, you know. And it is, you know, I don't know why. Sometimes it's even from overseas, right? Sometimes I get 30, country code 34, country code 60 something, and country code 34 is like Spain or something. Um, and sometimes I get, you know, uh, country code 86, which is China. I don't know anyone. I don't have any business with China, <laughs> obviously. And it's always, you know, uh, a spam. Uh, if it is 82, it's South Korea. And I might wonder, oh, who's called? But if it is someone I know, I would, I, I mean, there's caller ID, <laughs> right? The name will, the name will uh, appear there, but, you know, uh, obviously. So, look, this is what trend line does, you know, so. Think about it. Uh, if market returns, suppose you know. Um, oh no 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 no. So what if? Uh, what if the market return was six point nine one four? So what this is telling you is, you will, uh, RT is a function of data. Market return and alpha. We cannot always, you know, nail it, but, you know, uh, for example, uh, we know beta is, beta is here, right? Okay. And alpha is this. And then Suppose market return is this. And what's going to be the, uh, I mean, if we don't know, right? Uh, May of 2020, we have market return data, but we don't, we don't know this. Then we want to uh, uh, project for, you know, uh, uh, forecast it based on this trend line. All you need to do is, Data times market return plus this. And this is what? Uh, like, you know, I just. So actually, was it like that? Uh, it was close. It wasn't exactly, right? It wasn't. Ex 
this is actual, this is actual, this is a projection, right? Or forecast, right? So given, you know, um, trend line, we can uh, make a forecast, right? So everyone got the same result? Everyone got the same result? Did you all, were you able to all graph it like this? Jasmine, very good, very good. How about how about other people? How about other people? Hmm? Just the only one person? Uh, well, I I will have to assume that you all accomplished this. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask. Okay. Now, uh, so uh, uh, it's the, the time is seven oh seven. I think it's a good time to take a break. So let's take a ten minute break, and when we come back, we'll come back at about seven twenty ish. We're gonna apply. Uh, uh, this to uh, uh, we're gonna apply CAPM, right? We're gonna uh, so to do CAPM, we need you know uh, 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 Treasury bill. Uh, so uh, let's take a ten minute break. Okay, let's take a ten minute. Break. All right.
All right, we're back. We're back. Um, okay, so I guess I gotta. I better save this file. Save as. All right, so next, Kappen, okay, so Okay, so we know by now, you should know that uh, uh, capital S surprising model is basically making a, uh, 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 determining the required return. In other words, RI stands for return on individual, required return on individual stock, individual stock, and it is basically the uh, uh, RF risk-free return plus uh, market risk premium market risk premium is basically market return minus risk-free return right that's called market risk premium times beta, beta of that particular stock I, right? Again, if you move this If you move RF, risk free return, to the left hand side, right, it will be then RI minus RF. And the right hand side is going to be market risk premium. Okay. Now this beta is slightly different from it's different from this beta because this beta is simply the correlation between the market return and Excel's return. Okay. 
And it would be pretty, pretty similar, but you know, now you have to uh, realize. And now it is. Uh, oh, what happened? I just thought. Now it is risk premium versus risk premium, right? It's the risk premium versus risk premium. And uh, We know this is market risk premium. And, oh, okay. and this is individual stocks risk premium. In our example, it's apples, right? Apples risk premium, individual stocks. This, so this beta value may be uh, when we, so in other words, we are regressing Apple's risk premium against market risk premium, and it may it may actually come out similar to this. Okay, it may, but we don't know that yet. But we're gonna uh, we're gonna do that now. Another thing is. So we need to get this data. And what is the uh, uh, risk free return? Uh, short term T bill is risk free. The shorter the term may be, I mean, uh, generally under one year T bill, it's considered risk free, right? And of course, you know, uh, uh, generally all treasury securities are considered uh, risk free. But, the, you know, uh, um, the shorter, the shorter, you know, um, um, the shorter the uh, maturity, uh, the lower the risk. And you know the maturity risk. What's the maturity risk? The longer the maturity, uh, there is a. Uh, uh, risk associated with time, right? Because there can be a lot of, you know, uh, uh, variables that can affect uh, your, you know, uh, you know, treasuries, you know, uh, uh, time. So that's why there is, you know, a term premium or, you know, uh, maturity risk premium, right? Now, anyway, um, since we've been, think about it, all these data have been, all these data have been monthly, right? These data have been uh, monthly data. So uh, we're gonna also use monthly. In other words, 
one month treasury bill, right? We're gonna use an old um, uh, one month treasury bill uh, data, okay? So where do we look up, where do we go to look up treasury bill data? Uh, we need to go to um, Federal Reserve of St. Louis. Right, Federal Reserve of St. Louis uh, publishes all these, you know, uh, interest rate data and a lot of things. So we're going to go to uh, 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 okay. I'm not going to be using this for now. So I'm going to. Um, I have already bookmarked. Uh, I have already bookmarked, you know, Federal Reserve. Uh, So, but you can you can do the Google search. Uh, it's generally called Fred. Fred uh, is Federal Reserve of St. Louis, Federal Reserve Economic Data, and the uh, website is. Website address. I need, uh, okay. you put, uh, That should be big enough, right? Fred dot St. Louis. All right, everyone is there. Hello. Yes. Okay, Malaysia, you're the only one. How about the other people? Okay, Coral, you're all there, right? Coral, yes. Uh, Zainab, okay. Uh, that was of, of St. Louis, right? Now, The data that we want is uh, uh, key bills, right? Uh, you have GDP, CPI, M2, real GDP, inflation, tenure, only M1. You know, you can go by category. Category um, uh, money and banking finance. Blah, blah, blah. Population, employment, labor markets, national accounts, something like GDP, you know, and product, production and business activity, prices, international data, uh, I normally just type up, you know, uh, a treasure bill. However, uh, it's money banking and finance, so interest rates, right? Yeah. And then treasury bills. There are 34 data series, treasury bill. And we want uh, one month actually, so three months. Uh, I don't see. I'll just look up from here, one month. Uh, Uh, 
which is the one have a young woman CD. Uh, this is not. Constant maturity, right? Uh, a four week treasure was a little bit interesting. Well, um, yeah, DGS one month, right? DGS one month. This is uh, that's weird because I already uh, bookmarked it. So I should see the bookmark. Yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, this is a market yield on US Treasury, one month constant maturity. Oh, that's it, that's it. But somehow it didn't come up as I searched. So it's, as long as it's DGS one month, DGS one month, that's it. Okay. And the, uh, only to, uh, only to, uh, uh, customize our parameters, uh, frequency, monthly, method, end of the period, right? Because I can tell you, always end of the uh, trading, uh, you know, uh, today's price is end of the day, right? Closing price of the day. You cannot, right? Um, you cannot use average, you cannot use beginning, you cannot use open, you cannot use high or low. It's always, you know, a closing of the day. That data is the price data that, that represents today's trading, because that's the conclusion. That's the conclusion, right? So um, that's it. Uh, we need we don't need to do anything uh, else. So we, and then just uh, time period, we start from 2018, five years, right? Five years, five years, if you click on five years, right? It's gonna give you uh, 2018, July 1st, 2018, and we have only uh, July to, uh, 2023. You don't have uh, you don't have August data yet. Okay, you don't have August data because August has an end date. So um, recent five year. Uh, this range is basically recent five years. Most recent five years, right? Okay, you can you can save this. Uh, for example, you can you know uh, save this as a uh, uh, PDF uh, picture file. I, actually, I uh, took a shot yesterday. Okay. Let me just say this as say that uh, 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 
just wanted to see only the uh, scrap. But no, we'll, we'll do that later. Not... Now we're going to download the data. Okay. Let's click download. Download as Excel file, right? Okay. EGS one Open. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing that I'm doing. Okay. And you can save this file separately. You can save this file separately. Uh, Federal Reserve Economics Data link, right? Fred, St. Louis, Fred org, and blah, blah, blah. Um, so this is the heading. Uh, we don't need, although all we need is B and the return. So I'm going to copy. I'm going to copy that and paste it here. Paste. center the labels and on the line and since this is an ascending order I'm gonna sort it in descending order All right I'm gonna sort it in descending order so like home home to home sort and filter sort newest to the oldest All right. Now, I've been telling you over and over, uh, it would be very difficult to do this on the same computer, on the same, on one screen, on a single screen, because you have to watch and you have to do it. Okay. But if you have, you know, I've been telling you, you need two screens, right? You need two screens. And uh, uh, if you have a tablet, uh, on the tablet you watch, and on your laptop or on your, you know, uh, desktop, uh, you do, uh, you work on Excel. This is already in percentage. Everything is in percentage, right? Everything is in percentage. But however, I cannot use it as is because... Uh, Uh, because basically, you know, uh, we are dealing with, we're dealing with, you know, um, uh, percentage data. And if we convert this into percentage, it's going to be like four, uh, 548%, right? So, um, I'll pull this, uh, I will label this RF and uh, divide this by 100. And now it's going to be in the uh, in decimals. Um, I'll just uh, I'll do everything. Now then I can um, give it percentage there. 
and then always give it like two to three decimal places, two to three decimal places. Two is good. Now I can drag it down. Okay. Now, from C1 to C61, that's going to make it 61 data point. All right. So we're going to be. Um, But anyway, uh, we're, all we need is this, right? Um, so let's do the cap M. To do cap M, right? I wanna, uh, I'm gonna have to, uh, again, you know what this is. This is the uh, average of, the mean, right? Mean return, right? Average of market return as well. Was that really like that? Only zero point. Yeah, zero point three. Okay. Yeah, name of this uh, series is DGS one month. Ah, yeah. Um, so, um, I don't need this anymore. Uh, and uh, on merge. Now, so we're going to do this, right? Cap M, which is not a very difficult thing. So all I need is something like this. Oh, but before we do that, uh, what did I do? Uh, so, uh, we're gonna run, we're gonna run uh, regression on uh, these two to find uh, beta, right? Um, so let me. Oh, why? Why? I'm gonna have to move to the two. Oh. Let me copy the whole thing in. Move this. 
here. Okay. So, um, okay. So here, um, All right, app holds risk. Oh, what's going on? Okay, can you see this? Okay, and we have RI RM here. Uh, we're gonna, okay. Oh, because risk free return doesn't have August data, we'll have to match it. So we'll copy from July data here. So I'm gonna, so we're not gonna have exactly 60 data points, but that's fine. As best we can. Okay. And then this. Copy and paste only values. Paste, but you know, then uh, I don't know why this one is. Hmm. Well, it's a little cosmetic thing, so I'm going to take care of that later. But, you know, uh, that shouldn't be a factor. Why is it like this? Anyway, um, 
Now we're going to um, What we need here is Ri minus Rf, and this one is Rm minus Rf. Okay, so this is the uh, individual stocks risk premium, or Apple's risk premium. This one is market risk premium, which is not a difficult thing to do. So it's this minus this okay and here i'm gonna lock only column right not the row so uh i'll put a dollar sign here that means i'm locking in this i'm locking in this column c so that when i drag it to the right it will still be, uh, oh, what did I do? Uh, yeah, not there, not there. Uh, I, I got to lock here, right? Locking column, right? And then, not, not the row. So I drag it to the right. It will still be the, you know, B2 minus. Uh, C2. Okay, and then when I highlight those and drag it down, I don't know why this is not, uh, and I have some extra data here that I don't need. Um, so now, uh, what am I trying to do? What I'm trying to do is then, um, the, these two are, uh, this is Y and this is X. So I'm going to run regression of, uh, Y values on X values so that the risk, it will be a regression between risk premium and risk premium. I'm going to give it a slight, uh, very light uh, color. So to know that we are, uh, these are the data that we are. So we're going to go to data. Again, data analysis, regression. Hit OK, input Y range, this is Y, and input X range, this is X, OK, and I'll give G1 as the output range. G1. There you go. Labels included, labels, right? Hit OK. And uh, put a thick borderline around it. And increase the font. And change the font to uh, the one that you like. And then here, so therefore, we have now, oh, we have very good R square. Now it's uh, even 59. Uh, and our coefficients are, so this is beta. Uh, beta is pretty good. Uh, and then 
key statistics are also very significant. R square, very good. And uh, 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 intercept, yeah, very, so it, there should be very little intercept. I mean, the, the bigger the intercept, it's good. The bigger the intercept, it's good. However, uh, even though uh, when you are regressing risk premium over risk premium, uh, the there is supposed to be very uh, the alpha, the vertical intercept is supposed to be expected to be small. But if it is significantly large, then that's very good. That's what they are all after. Uh, Hunt for alpha. Um, but, you know, anyway, um, T values are very significant. So these are very robust estimations. And then uh, estimations of parameters. Uh, I don't want to make it too. Uh, I want to make it, it close. Uh, because we need to still, you know, remind ourselves what we are trying to do. So um, then now let's think about it. If we want to, uh, what we want to know is what's going to be the, uh, what's the required return for uh, Apple? So the required return will be, and you know, using this, using this, Cap and formula, right? So, uh, required return, right? Required return, and I, uh, 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 required return. And uh, alpha, uh, risk free, uh, RF, uh, RM, beta. Then we know RF. For July, right? We this is for July, right? And that's because that's the only, um, the most recent risk-free monthly return, right? Risk-free return monthly. And for uh, RM minus RF, uh, wait a minute. Rm minus, so I'm going to, because I, I have Rm minus Rf, I'll just use, already I have Rm minus Rf. And you, okay. it's kind of negative, but you know, that's, and beta, There you go. So our required return, this doesn't look pretty, but uh, 
RF plus RM minus RF times beta times where's times? Um, Ah, uh, no, times, let's see, okay, times, beta. So what do you get? Ah, required return is? Required return on Apple is 2.477. What is this? Um, this is not expected return. This is required return. And this is what we use on, uh, remember, Gordon growth model, right, Gordon model. What is Gordon model? Price of the stock, right? At time zero is dividend at time one. Okay, uh, let's do it at T plus one. I'm T plus one. And then I'll, 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 I'll have to uh, mm -hmm. over R minus G. seen how we calculate the growth rate. You know what? You've seen how we calculate the growth rate. Right? Dividend growth rate. Right? And you know, um, in most examples, this was given. But as I've been telling you, in reality, nobody gives you this. And if someone gives you this, how do you know if it is the correct one? Right? You should be, although there are sources where you can uh, look up the required return, something like, you know, Morningstar, Value Line services, but they are all paid, paid services. You should be able to uh, in the absence of those, you know, uh, data sources, or, you know, um, uh, how would you do that? You should be able to calculate it on your own. So, this is how you find, how you calculate this required return. And that's happened. That's capital as a pricing model. So when we did that, I've been telling you, I was telling you, a CAPM is a misnomer. Because cap CAPM doesn't actually price any asset. Because CAPM per se only calculates this required return. Right? So uh, that's it. That's how you uh, uh, apply CAPM. Of course, CAPM is a uh, 
equilibrium model, general equilibrium model. So is it may it's not very, you know, it's not really, it's not gonna give you a very exact uh, so does this give you the price that you get here? Is that the uh, actual price, market price? No, of course it's not market price. What you get here is the uh, intrinsic value, right? This is intrinsic value or rational price. Intrinsic value. Or rational price or Faraday. So, in other words, what that means is uh, actual price, market price may be different. It will, of course, it will. Most of the times it will be different from the intrinsic value or fair value or, or a rational value, rational price. But at least it gives you an idea. If the market price is above this, then what can you tell? Oh, it's a, it's overvalued, so time to sell. Right? If it is below this, it's on the value. It's a buy target, right? Does that make sense? <laughs> Only four people now still hanging in there. So, um, well, I hope you have uh, any questions? Any questions? Any questions? I guess no questions. I don't know. All right, so I have. I hope you have enjoyed uh, this summer term, right? It's not a whole semester, but you know, uh, uh, I hope you have learned something very valuable, right? And I've enjoyed. All right, have a great rest of the summer, and if you uh, take uh, classes in the fall, uh, have a great uh, next semester, and uh, I will. I hope to see you guys in the uh, advanced classes. Okay. All right. You're welcome, Jasmine. Thank you're you. Welcome. All right. You're welcome. Thank you, uh, Professor. All right, Coral. You're welcome. You're welcome, Malaysia. Thank you, Professor, right. for the for a great semester. Thank you. All right, Brandon. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Have a great uh, uh, rest of the summer and. Uh, all right. Uh, don't forget, final is due tonight. Okay. All right. So uh, uh, that's it for today. Uh, stop recording and sign out. Stop recording. Oh, it's not just one. Thank you.